Hello, everyone. Welcome. So glad to have you here in our Zoom call and on YouTube. Welcome to the 2020 Statehood Day celebration. Today is a very exciting day because it's Indiana's 204th birthday. Today, we are joined by folks from across the state to learn more about the roles of our branches of government, why diversity is important to Indiana, to hear our winning essays from this year's competition, and of course, talk about how Indiana became a state. So we're so excited to have you guys here with us today to go through all of those things. But before we begin, I do have some logistics, some housekeeping to go over. First of all, my name's Beth Brandon, and I am manager of education at the Indiana Historical Society. That's this place right over here. Today, we're going to have a mix of videos and live interactions. We're also going to be dropping in links throughout. So if you are joining us on Zoom today, using the chat, we will be dropping in some links for resources throughout this entire presentation. And they're all additional resources for students and things that you can use to learn more about Indiana statehood. If you have a question at any point during this program, feel free to drop it into the question and answer section. At the bottom of your screen, you will see a Q&A button. It's labeled Q&A. So you can use that to answer, ask questions, and we'll try to put our answers in there too. You can also add comments to the chat box as we go. Just make sure that you're replying to panelists and attendees. That way everyone on the Zoom call gets to see what we're all saying. This program is being recorded and broadcast to YouTube. So be sure to check out the Indiana Historical Society's YouTube channel in the coming weeks for a fully transcribed version of this presentation. All right, without further ado, I would like to introduce a few of our partners who make this essay contest and this event possible. So I want to introduce to you we have with us today the Indiana State House Tour Office, the Indiana State Library, the Indiana State Museum and Historic Sites, and the Indiana Historical Society. So a few words from these partners. to the Eugene and Marilyn Glick Indiana History Center, home to the Indiana Historical Society and our exhibits, The Indiana Experience. The Indiana Historical Society is Indiana's storyteller, connecting people to the past. We do this by collecting millions and millions of paper-based documents, such as maps, pictures, letters, and other primary sources that help tell Indiana's unique stories. We then share these stories through books, exhibits, events, and more to inspire others to learn about Indiana's history. We welcome you to join us and travel back in time as we explore some of Indiana's stories. State Library and Historical Bureau's mission to support your local public libraries, preserve Indiana history, and provide opportunities for you to learn or teach about the history of Indiana and the local communities around Indiana. We want you to know that we don't just work for adults. We run the Statehood Day Essay Contest for fourth graders and a writing contest in the spring called Letters About Literature, where students from grades 4 through 12 write to an author about how their book has impacted their life. 
Our agency has librarians and historians working here. The librarians are here to help answer your questions, digitize materials, and make information findable. We collect books, maps, pictures, newspapers, posters, and other printed items. We work to preserve these printed things so that years from now, hundreds of years from now, it will still be available to researchers and students just like you. Our historians work hard to tell those stories today. The historians are finding fun and interesting stories from the past. What has happened here? Why is it this way now? Has anyone been through this before? How did those people handle it and what can we learn from that? We hope that together we can make history fun and interesting. The best way to find out more about what we do is through our website, in.gov library. Check out our digital collections to look at a lot of neat stuff from our collections online. This includes pictures, maps, pamphlets, and diaries. You'll also find our blogs and links to social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. There are lots of fun and interesting topics being discussed on there. Thank you for joining the Indiana State Library and Indiana Historical Bureau and celebrating Indiana's 204th birthday. All right, and located just across the way in the Indiana State House, we have Jeanette with us today. Thank you for being here. Can you tell us a little bit about the State House Tour Office and some of the work that's happening over in the State House, which I can see right behind you? How cool. Well, thank you, Beth. Um, and statehood greetings, statehood day greetings to everybody from the beautiful and historic uh, Indiana State House. Um, as Beth said, my name is Jeanette, and I am with the State House Tour Office. Uh, we are missing you all today. We're missing the opportunity to host our annual birthday party, uh, but we hope that you're doing what you can to stay safe. Uh, once we've weathered this health crisis, we invite you to come and take a tour of your Indiana State House. Uh, we are one of eight states that still have all three branches of state government still in the same historic building. So that includes the executive branch, the legislative branch, and the judicial branch. Uh, so there's lots to see and there's lots to learn when you come here. Uh, you can see the building behind me retains that look of 1888 when the building was built almost 132 years ago. Just this week here at the State House, we welcomed the original Indiana State Constitutions back to the State House. Most of the year, uh, these irreplaceable historic documents are kept at the Indiana State Archives. But from now, Statehood Day, through the end of legislative session, which is the end of April, they are on display in a unique and secure case in the rotunda, so they can be enjoyed by the people who come and visit the building. Now, while traveling and sightseeing, we know are kind of limited right now, every Hoosier should take the opportunity to visit this place, remembering that the Indiana State House belongs to all of us who live in the state of Indiana. Um, in the meantime, you can go to our website at in.gov where there are several options for you to enjoy the State House. Uh, we have some virtual tours that are posted there, a lot of photo galleries, and there's also an additional Statehood Day program that you can enjoy. So on behalf of the Indiana State House Tour Office and Education Center, and for all of us here at the Indiana State House, mask up Hoosiers and stay safe. Happy 204th birthday, Indiana. Thank you, Gina. My favorite part of looking at the State House has to be the rotunda. And that is something that you can check out online if you don't have the opportunity to go and visit in person at this time. Now, we are located at the Indiana Historical Society downtown Indianapolis, right along the canal. And if you continue walking down the canal just a little bit, 
In fact, from my office window, I can see the Indiana State Museum. And with us today, we have Nicole from the Indiana State Museum. Thank you so much for being with us, Nicole. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the cool things going on over at the State Museum these days? Thank you for being here today. And we are so excited to have you here virtually. And at the Indiana State Museum and Historic Sites, we connect you to real people, places, and things with our goal to engage you with the past so you know what happened before you were here in Indiana and connect with the present and use what you've learned through your visits at not just the Indiana State Museum, but also our 11 historic sites. And use that what you learn and experience to make your family and um, your community and even the state of Indiana a better place for all of us. Now, as you travel through our galleries and our historic sites, you travel through time and you get to explore when Indiana, before Indiana was a state and was covered by an ancient city when we had the ice stage here and mastodons and mammoths roamed our state. And then all the way to when Indiana became a state, both here, a little bit of information here at the Indiana State Museum, but also in Corden and beyond. So come join us when you can safely visit. And we would love to share our Indiana stories with you. Thanks, Nicole. Um, it looks like you have some type of skull behind you. What, where are you? Ah, so I am in our naturalist lab, which is temporarily closed, but we will be opening it very soon. And this is where you can look at really cool specimens. Uh, we have some fossils right behind me on our micro eye. So you can get a really close view at some amazing fossils from our, the Paleozoic era. But we also have um, some specimens, some taxidermy animal, animals that so you can learn about some of the animals that we have here in Indiana as well. That's so cool. I, I noticed some of the lab equipment that you had behind you. So I got a little curious. We actually have some lab equipment at the Historical Society too. It helps us to really analyze our documents, look at types of paper and ink and really get a close up look. So, so, so cool. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Nicole. Absolutely. So thank you to all of the partners that you just heard from. Like I said, this essay contest would not exist without them. And the essay contest is a pretty special thing that happens across Indiana each year. And so to tell us a little bit more about it, we have Suzanne Walker from the Indiana State Library. Hi everyone, thanks so much, Beth. I'm so glad that all of you are here today celebrating Statehood Day with us. Of course, we all miss you at our um, individual locations, but hopefully soon we'll all be able to be back together again. So I just wanted to say a few quick words about the Statehood Day essay contest. It is a tradition that we've done for many years in Indiana to celebrate Indiana statehood by writing about a a topic that has to do with Indiana. And this year's topic was diversity in Indiana. And I just wanted to thank all the students for their really heartfelt entries. We got really wonderful entries about this um, topic this year. And congratulations to our four winners, for sure. I wanted to mention that we did get entries from many areas in the state. We got entries from South Bend, Fort Wayne, Munster, Westville, Indianapolis, Mooresville, Bedford, and many other cities and towns. So Indiana was well represented in our um, pool of entries this year. The judges always work very hard to um, select entries that they feel, you know, um, work well with the theme and I was very pleased with the four that they selected for this year. I wanted to give a big thank you to the teachers and the parents that worked really hard to get our um, essay winners um, to submit their videos today. So I'm so excited that we get to share those. So just thank you for participating in the Statehood Day essay contest. And um, we're just very excited to share your videos today. Hi, my name is Nick and I wish to show my essay for diversity in the end. I started. My English teacher says that people are surprised to hear that uh, we have so many English language learning at uh, my school. She says that people are interested in our stories and uh, will like uh, to hear 
share about our journey. I'm a, an English language learner and moved to Indiana last school year. I spent the first uh, eight years of my life uh, in Ukraine. My mama moved uh, to Indiana because she says that uh, it will, will be better on almost all ways. In the school there, you must uh, wear uh, uniforms. Here you many may uh, wear wearing uh, whatever you wish. There we didn't, didn't uh, not have uh, smart boards and uh, Chromebooks. We learned uh, from books and uh, worksheets. Uh, arrived uh, in Indiana from the third grade and even thought. In uh, I'd uh, been studying English science the first uh, grades sometimes. I didn't uh, understand uh, what uh, my teacher say was saying. Uh, one year later, I am uh, understand much better. My teacher told me to raise my hand if uh, I don't understand. My teacher asked uh, me if uh, if I called uh, help her to to English as a, a virtual student uh, who had just uh, moved uh, here from China. Easy, I say. Then uh, the student first uh, popped on the screen. I says Ni hao, and she says Ni hao, right back. My teacher said, my teacher smiled and asked uh, how I know how to say hello in Chinese. E Easy, I says. Google Translator. Tell me about diversity in Indiana, you say. And I say, uh, here you will find a boy from Ukraine teaching a girl from China how to speak English. That's my essay. Bye. Hi. I'm Elena Bowen, a fourth grade student at St. Thomas More School, and this is my diversity essay. It's a, it's a good thing that diversity is a part is part of Indiana because there are good things that happen when different ethnic groups come together. If we didn't have diversity, we would have segregation, be divided, and not show unity. This is it is good to celebrate diversity. Over 400 years ago, the state of Indiana was not diverse. People of color were taken from their countries and sold as slaves. Slaves were forced to work for no pay. Once I was treated badly because of the color of my skin. A lady at a farmer's market, market thought that because I'm African American, I would steal her product. I would steal her products. This one incident made me upset, but at the time I didn't know that it was racism. My mom sat me down and, and explained to me, race is your background, your skin color, and your culture. For example, Mexi Mexicans, Africans, Asians, Europeans, Puerto Ricans, Chinese, Japanese, Bahamians, Native Americans, and Jamaicans are all examples of different races. Each one of these, gr each one of these groups have many strengths and beautiful creations to share with the world. Plants can be diverse too. I had a plant from Africa. Their color, the colors, the colors and odd shapes add a different look to my mom's garden. These plants help our ecosystem, not by producing air, but also by producing food, food resources and other resources that can help our food chain continue to grow. Offices, schools, churches, and more can be diverse too. You attend these places and find different ethnic groups. My local community is made up of African Americans, Mexican Americans, and Polish Americans. In conclusion, celebrating, a di celebrating diversity is a good thing because it helps us grow together as one. We each have our strengths that may be helpful to someone. We 
that when we celebrate diversity, we can enjoy each other's creativity. Hello, my name is Ethan Chenoweth. I'm a fourth grader at St. Charles Borromeo Catholic School in Fort Wayne, Indiana. This is a diverse Indiana. Indiana is diverse in many ways. Have you ever played or watched a sport? There are many in Indiana. But some of my favorites among futures are baseball, basketball, and football. These are your sports. You should, you should attend the largest spring event in Indiana, the Indy 500. More than 250,000 people attend the Indy 500 each year. The song Back Home Again in Indiana is also played there every year. So speaking of music, did you know that music in Indiana was probably influenced by German and Irish immigrants who arrived here in the 1830s? Jenner Recordings was founded in Richmond, Indiana. Some of the first jazz, blues, and country music was from there. Michael Jackson and the Jackson Five are from Gary, Indiana. By the loser, John Mellencamp had many famous songs. Bluegrass music is part of the Southern Indiana's culture. Bill and Gloria Gaither are Southern Gospel singers from Anderson, Indiana. Hoosier music is as diverse as the people of Indiana. The Great Lakes Plain was flooded by glaciers and then many small lakes appeared. At the two plains, there are lots of riverways and rich farmland, not to mention our capital, Indianapolis, is there too. Southern hills and lowlands and have many riverways, including the Lost River and the Ohio River. Even a two-hour trip across our state shows diversity in three natural regions of Indiana. Whether through sports, through music, or through its regions, this is a diverse Indiana. Thank you. My name is Addison, and I am from Yorktown Elementary School, and I'm in fourth grade. My essay is called A Taste of Difference. According to Merriam-Webster Dictionary, diversity is defined as the condition of having or being of different elements. Diversity makes each person in Indiana different. It makes everyone unique and special. Without diversity, life would be boring. If you went into an ice cream shop and vanilla was the only flavor, the ice cream would be boring and the customers would not visit. Have you ever wondered about heroes like police officers, doctors, and even firefighters in Indiana? If we did not have diversity, who would care for us when we are sick? We are currently struggling to fight COVID. I know many different people in Indiana who are working together to fight this disease. We need people with different talents who can help us. If we don't have diversity, we cannot help those in need. We are in a free state, which means different beliefs are always welcome, even if you are from a different culture. It's important to have different cultures because they bring different views, religions, and traditions. These ideas help govern and worship freely. At my school in Indiana, we don't see people exactly like ourselves. People are from other countries and states and different cultures with many different beliefs. Diversity brings creativity to our state. Different people bring different ideas. When we bring together different ideas, we discover new cures, medicines, laws, and education. Creativity and discoveries allow our state to grow and change. Each person adds creativities, creativity and brings new ideas to Indiana. Different cultures working together help people in need. People are brought together through creativity and culture. Like with ice cream, new flavors and cultures bring ideas and values that we haven't had before. Thank you so much to all of our participants and a heartfelt congratulation goes out to our essay contest winners. I want to say personally, I am so proud of you. Those are incredible essays and very inspiring words. I am so proud. Now, along with the accolades of being in today's presentation, there are also a few other awards that go with this uh, with winning this contest. Suzanne, can you tell us a little bit about those? 
I sure can. All of the winning students will receive a medal that was provided by the Indiana State House. They will also receive certificates signed by Governor Holcomb and also deposits in 529 educational savings accounts that we'll hear more about in just a moment. And in addition to that, there were many items that were provided by the Indiana State Library, by the Indiana State Museum, the Indiana Historical Society, and also the Indiana State House. All of those prize packs are being put together and will be mailed out on Monday. Sorry for the delay, but many of us are not working in our locations 100% of the time. So that's why it's taken a little bit longer. And I understand from reading about shipping that there are lots of uh, challenges in the shipping industry right now because of um, the holidays coming up and everyone mailing things. So they will hit the mailboxes on Monday here at the State Library, and we're hoping to get those out to you guys very soon. And I just want to encourage everyone to go read the essays that we did just hear about from the students. Um, they are a great read, a really great way for you to feel wonderful about Indiana and the future of Indiana, which is in the hands of these capable students. So congratulations again. Yay. Yes, and the link for that is in the chat. So if you do want to click on that right now, save it to your computer. Um, and of course, you can look at those from the Indiana State Library's website as well. They are listed there. So they will stay up there in case you ever lose that link. We hope you won't though. But we mentioned, you know, along with all of these awesome prizes, that there is something else that goes with it, which is the College Choice 529 plan. So today with us, we have Christina, who's going to tell us a little bit about what is a College Choice 529 plan? Why is that prize cool? Thank you, Beth. Um, hi, everyone, and happy Statehood Day. Um, we are proud to present the Statehood Day essay winners with account deposits towards their 529 accounts. College Choice 529 is run by Indiana Education Savings Authority under the Treasurer of State. 529 plans were established to help save money for education expenses. There are many unique features from low fees to tax advantage investing make them one of the most popular ways to save. Students can use the funds for qualifying school expenses, such as tuition, fees, books, computers, and other supplies. And at any eligible institution, two-year, four-year, public or private universities, vocational and technical schools, and graduate programs. You can also use the funds for apprenticeship programs. Uh, College Choice 529 is a great resource to help fund students' future education goals. To learn, to learn more, visit collegechoicedirect.com. Congratulations, Statehood Day essay winners. It is a pleasure to award you these deposits. Thank you so much. And thank you for you know, awarding these deposits to our award winners. Like we said, if you do want to learn more in the chat, there is a link there. If you have some other questions about it, feel free to drop those into the Q&A as well. Um, and now we have a few exciting things coming over from the State House. So the State House, which we've seen a little bit of already, is home to our three branches of government, the executive branch, so the governor heads that one, the legislative branch, that's our senators and our representatives, and the judicial branch, which is the Indiana courts. So we've heard from students across the state about why diversity is important to Indiana. But now we're going to hear from our governor. Hello, I'm Governor Eric Holcomb, and I'm proud to join you virtually to celebrate Indiana's 204th birthday. This year's theme of celebrating a diverse Indiana is so important because our state is full of people from different backgrounds and experiences. And that diversity makes our Indiana a great place to live, work, and play. Each one of you comes from a different walk of life. You've experienced things from a different perspective no one else has, and that's so important. Indiana is a better place when a diverse group of people come together to face our shared challenges. That's how we make history. But you know, history isn't just about the past, pictures in a book or things you might see in a museum. History happens every single day and you're part of it. While we celebrate Indiana Statehood Day, remember, it's just as much about the future 
as it is about the past. So be prepared. Work hard. Do the right thing by your parents and teachers. Be loyal to your friends. And live a life that makes us, and more importantly, yourself, proud. I can't wait to see all the things you accomplish to make your town and our state a better place to live, work, and play. Hello, I'm Chief Justice Loretta Rush. I have my four colleagues from the Indiana Supreme Court with me here today to celebrate Statehood Day. We usually do this in person. I usually do this with the governor in the state house and my colleagues do it in, in different facilities around the state, but we're glad to be with you and pleased to talk to you about the theme of this year's Statehood Day, celebrating a diverse Indiana. Before joining the Supreme Court, I was an attorney um, in a law firm and then I was also a trial court judge. Each of my colleagues come from different backgrounds and I want to introduce themselves to you. Justice David. Hello, I'm Justice Stephen David. I used to be a trial court judge in Boone County the five of us hear cases called oral arguments in the state courtroom that was used starting in 1888. The courtroom is one of two rooms in the state house where you can see stained glass from inside. The windows resemble owls, symbolizing wisdom. Hi, I'm Justice Mark Massa. I previously served in various positions in state and federal justice systems and as a practicing lawyer, and before that, as a news reporter. There have been 110 justices on the Indiana Supreme Court since 1816. We're not elected. Instead, we go through a process called merit selection, where we interview with a committee, the governor makes an appointment, then voters are asked whether we should remain on the bench. Hello, I'm Justice Jeffrey Slaughter. Before becoming a justice, I worked as a lawyer both in law firms and in government. Our state constitution gives the Indiana Supreme Court the important duty to deliver justice through our opinions and orders. As part of our duties, my colleagues and I do a lot of reading and writing. Hello, I'm Justice Christopher Goff. I served as a trial court judge in Wabash County before I became a justice. As my colleagues said, we hear oral arguments do a great deal of reading and writing. And when we make a decision about an issue, it's based on the law. You can read all of our decisions and watch the cases we hear live online at courts.in.gov. You can also follow us on Twitter at nCourts. So in conclusion, many persons work for the judicial branch and we're all here to serve you. There are over 200 Supreme Court employees that work for our court. We have nearly 700 judges or judicial officers all around the state. Thing you got one in your in your county at your courthouse, and many other justice stakeholders like probation officers, problem-solving court staffs, court reporters, prosecutors, defenders, bailiffs, and others. We're glad to celebrate Statehood Day with you, and that we, and we hope that you think about a career in public service. Happy Statehood Day! Thank you. Now, you might have noticed that that video only talked to two of our branches of government. So we looked at the executive branch and the judicial branch, but one of them was missing. Yes, the legislative branch. Now, you can find more about that and listen to some of our legislators by going to the um, link that is coming into your Dropbox or into the chat right now. But if you go to the Indiana or in.gov website in the Indiana State House Tour Office, the Statehood Day program that they have includes talking to some of our, our senators and representatives. So definitely check that out. They also have additional information about what different departments do across the state so really great stuff there. Uh, now we're here to celebrate Indiana becoming the 19th state to join the union in 1816. But how did that happen? Well, there are some really great resources to learn more about how Indiana became a state. And again, we'll drop those in the chat for you and we'll make sure we connect you with all of those. 
we have things from videos to websites to magazines to lesson plans all that cool stuff to learn more about it i'm going to give you a really brief history so the road to statehood actually begins while indiana was still a territory there were many debates about how the state would function as it moved towards statehood these debates included topics like taxes governor power and even slavery by 1813 the capital had moved from vincennes to Corridon, Indiana. That's down south on the Ohio River. At the end of 1815, the legislature petitioned the United States Congress to become a state because we finally met this really critical part, which was to have a minimum of 60,000 free white residents. So in June of 1816, 43 constitutional delegates from the Indiana Territory met in Corridon for the Constitutional Convention. So this was to write Indiana's constitution. Jonathan Jennings was elected president of this convention. And the next step was to send the drafted constitution written during that summer to the United States for approval. Indiana was formally admitted to the union on December 11th, 1816. 204 years ago. And Jonathan Jennings became our first governor. Now to learn a little bit more about the Constitutional Convention and how Indiana became a state, we have our friend Angela, who is going to share with us a little bit about how this happened after eating a very, 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 very hot pepper. Enjoy. <laughs> Hello, my name is Angela Giacomelli. I'm a researcher slash historian here at the Indiana Historical Society in the Exhibitions Department. Today, because of some cruel co-workers, I will be eating a hot pepper and then telling you about the 1816 Constitutional Convention. So here we go for history. Ooh. All right. For history, we're doing it. Okay, 1816, we had been really excited about becoming a state. And finally, by that year, we had enough people living in the state of Indiana. And so, we asked this to the US government, can we become a state? And the government's like, yeah, go for it. So, in April of that year, they pass an enabling act. Then the next month, oh, I'm really a dragon in this, breathing fire. The next month, in May of 1816, whew, we elect some delegates, mainly the popular dudes. No time for a real election. Whew, and then, in June, they descend upon Corridon, which is in southern Indiana. Whew, and I can't feel my tongue, so I'll keep trying to talk. And in Corridon, for over two weeks, all of these men, the 43 delegates, come together in committees. Whew, and they talk about the different parts of the Constitution, dividing up into committees, talking about militia to education, the balance of power, slavery, all of these things. After two weeks and lots of compromise and discussion, sometimes under the elm, the Constitution elm, they come up with a document whew, that they are okay with. And that document later became our very first Constitution. Whew, they send it off to the U.S. government. U.S. government's like, this is great. I love it. And so later that year, on December 11th, we are finally made to be a state, and we are entered into the Union. Conveniently, the guy who had been the president 
of that convention later becomes the first governor of the state. And that is the Constitutional Convention and how it became a state. And now I'm going to drink some milk. Thank you for watching. Oh, for history. That was so hot. Everything hurt. Oh. 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 What was that? Is that the hottest one? Did you give me the hottest one? Oh. Is this supposed to make it better? Oh. Oh. It's so painful. I did not force her to eat this pepper. Just wanted to go out on the limb and say that. But the special thanks that goes out to Angela for, for taking one for history. Um, thank you, everyone. As you have noticed, if you're on our Zoom call today, we dropped a ton of chats for a ton of links for resources into the chat. If you're like, whoa, it's too many resources for me right now. I get it. That's cool. Don't fret. We will definitely be sending these out in an email following this program, along with the links for watching the video again. So all of that will be coming in a follow-up email. Also in that follow-up email, you will be getting a survey. So all educators who participated, we'd love to hear from you about what you liked what, how this worked for you and how many students you have uh, participating with you today. So thank you so much for all of you and you will be getting that link coming up. So that will be following up. Now, as we come to a close today, I wanna take a moment to thank the whole team over here at IHS, the Indiana Historical Society. It takes a lot of people to make a virtual program work and we have a lot of virtual programs that we offer, so you can feel free to check out indianahistory.org to learn more. So thank you for all of your support today. And thank you to the wonderful team that I get to work with annually to celebrate Indiana statehood. So to Nicole at the State Museum and State Historic Sites, Jeanette at the State House Tour Office, Lindsay with the Historic Bureau, um, and Suzanne at the State Library, Anna with me over here at IHS, who runs all of our bookings for all of our group trips and visits. Thank you so much to all of you for all of the work that you've done in supporting our students and our educators in learning throughout this year. So we hope that you will continue your Indiana Statehood Day celebration with some of the fun activities that we've shared with you and some of those websites that you can check out to learn more. We hope that we get to see you in person sometime soon. And if not, we'll continue to connect virtually. So on that note, that wraps us up, except for one very special video. So Callie, if you can share that with us, thank you. The Indiana Chant by April Pulisere written for the Bicentennial of the State of Indiana in 2016. <clears throat> America's crossroads, highways run past rows of corn beneath the sun. Tomatoes, hay, soybeans, wheat, storm fronts clash in summer's heat. Rivers roll, winding bright, Kankakee, Mommy, Wabash White, St. Joseph Sugar Creek, Flat Rock Blue, Ohio Eel and Tippa Canoe, Steel and Studebakers, Indy Cars, Farmers Markets, Canning Jars, Karsten Caves, Crinoids, Rocks, Indiana Limestone Building Blocks, Horses, Buggies, Tractors, Trains, Tree Frogs Trilling, Sand Hill Cranes, Bass Lake, Lemon Lake, Ready to Row, Max and Cucky, Morse, Monroe, Mississinawa, Wawa Sea, Potoka, Brookville, James, Santee, Indianapolis, Walk, Don't Run, Fort Wayne, South Bend, Bloomington, Hammond, Gary, Carmel Sweet, 
Evansville, Elkhart, Stroll, a street. Ball State, Butler, Pick, Purdue. Notre Dame, Ivy Tech, go IU. Squirrels, rabbits, woodchucks, deer. Bison, bats, their home is here. Oak and beech tree, wildflower spring. Migrating birds, feed and sing. Forest, prairie, dune and swale. Strawberries, blueberries, by the pale. Chain of lakes, clifty falls. Raceways, greenways, basketballs. Coaches, composers, engineers. Veterans, vice presidents, and nation cheers. Astronauts, artists, Olympians, too. Who's your heroes? Could be you. Imagine, invent, cheer your team. Indiana, Indiana, plan, plant, dream. Thank you very much. This is your favorite Hoosier Toucan encouraging you to read local. So long. Thanks, Sammy. Sammy the Toucan is pretty awesome. That wraps us up for today. So again, I want to encourage you to visit the Indiana State House Tour Office page for their video. Thank you to our teachers and everyone who's participated in our contest, our parents, our students. Um, and we hope to see you at one of our four sites, either virtually in person in the near future. Happy birthday, Indiana.